Hi there guys, it's Mike from MCQ Bushcraft here and welcome to another video. I've been out doing some shooting today, just take the 12 bore out and uh, managed to get myself a rabbit, I've got a wood pigeon as well and I've got the rabbit just here with me and uh, I thought I'd just do a quick video showing you how to dress a rabbit in a particular way. I'm actually dressing this rabbit not just for meat but for the hide as well because I'm going to brain tan the hide at a later stage. Um, so it's really just a bit more of a delicate way of preparing a rabbit where you want to separate the hide, avoid getting blood on it and uh, just take your time as I always do when I'm dressing game. The first thing I'm going to do with the rabbit is squeeze some urine out of it. It has been hit by a shotgun, you can see it's got a few broken bones where the spread must have hit it and it was a fairly heavy load actually, it's all I really had so that was just the way it was but to squeeze the urine out you just run your hand down the belly like this and you should see some urine start to come out. I've got nothing coming out in my case, so perhaps it's vacated its bladder. Hopefully so. Alternatively, the bladder could be punctured and the urine could be inside it. And this is generally why if you're using a shotgun, you want to get this thing dressed pretty quickly. You can see rigor mortis hasn't set in yet with this. It's still warm, so it should be easy to dress and get the hide off in one piece. But first things first, just going to lie it down. Just going to take my knife, make a small incision, and I'm going to actually take the hide off before I gut the rabbit because I want to get as little blood on the hide as possible. Do this part pretty slowly. There we go. And you can see that the skin now has been separated from the actual meat. We can just kind of work that away there. And you've got yourself a bit of a hole where you can see that the skin has actually been separated away from the flesh. What I tend to do is actually put my hand up inside here and uh, start to start to loosen it up basically. And I'm going to slice all the way up here once the hide is fairly loose from the actual flesh of the animal and that way I won't puncture the gut cavity there and start to leak anything out over the hide which I really want to kind of avoid. So that should be pretty straightforward. So once you've separated this up a little bit you can take your knife and just start running it up. And just work it off a little bit more. feel a little bit of shot there actually. Looks like the, the hit was around this area here which is probably why we've got broken arms at the front. See my fingers are right up here now so we've really separated quite a lot of the hide. I'm not too worried if it's a straight line, it's really just the main bulk of the hide that I'm after. And once we've separated quite a lot of the hide off of the body here, we can start to actually bring it out from other areas as well, so you can start to tuck the knee just like this out of the hide. And, uh, and start to pull the leg out. You don't want to be too rough, even though rabbit flesh comes off or rabbit skin comes off really easily. It's uh, something you still want to take your time with, especially if you want to actually have a decent hide at the end of it. And you can see I can get my finger right through there now, which is, uh, which is pretty good. You can pop bit of the hide off there. Sometimes you lose it around the foot. I'm not too bothered about that. I really just want the main bulk of the leg. You can just do the same with the other leg. Tuck it through the hide like that. 
watch out if there's any broken bones around there because they'll be seriously sharp. You don't really want to be doing this if you've got cuts on your hands. My hands are pretty good at the moment, but I wouldn't do this if I had any real deep cuts or infections. I'll just pop a glove on. There we go, so we've popped the hide off there as well. You can actually cut it just at the back here. You're gonna find that you've got a little bit of tail. If you put your thumb around the back of it, you can get your thumb just through like that. And your knife can kind of follow. Just like so. You might have a bit of bone and stuff in there. You can always tidy that up at a later date. And it should just start to peel off real nice. Oh, we've got quite a lot of shot there. You can see these are number fours. A really big pellet, to be honest, for, for such an animal. I expected a lot of trauma, and we have up front. There it is. That blood isn't a problem, really, when tanning the hide. We can actually get that off quite easily through the tanning process even with something as basic as brain tanning. And you've got some valuable fat as well there that uh, obviously he's put on in the colder months. We have some broken bones around here. You want to be careful. Really, the process is, is fairly straightforward. Just take your time. Again, just putting that elbow through there. Trying to get your thumb through by just working the skin off. And then watching the broken bone. There we go, you can support the leg a little bit if you're worried about that bone. It's a bit of a mess up front. Gonna have to get some of this flesh off the hide or else that'll go rancid. As you start to free this up, it will come away quite easily. And we're really just left with the head and uh, if you're going to do some brain tanning, you're going to want some brains and the brains are in the head. So we're really going to need to uh, just take it easy with the hide around the head there and not just start sort of ripping at it. You can see some serious little puncture holes around here where the number fours went through. I imagine they've gone clean out the other side as well. Usually use number fours for geese. So when you've spent some time working the hide off, you normally end up with quite a nice piece of hide. Obviously the arms and the legs are still like little cylinders, so you may want to choose to actually take your knife and open everything up. And it's, it's a pretty simple process really, you just identify the tail or the head, just open that up. You can lose a bit of Fur, which isn't really a massive issue at this point. You will lose a little bit more through the process when you're stretching and working the hide. And you can see that the legs are like, almost like small gloves. <laughs> it's, 
it's difficult to leave them like that without them drying right out and they just become so hard they're really unusable so again a good thing to do is just to take your knife and uh, identify the little arm there and just open it up and then you've opened the hide up just a little bit more for you to have more skin to actually make something out of the same again with this arm here you can see it just there once you actually start to open them up they become quite large and if you have a couple of them you can make quite a lot of stuff out of this hats are some of the best things you can make from rabbit's hides they're very soft and they're really warm and because it's not a particularly big hide it doesn't take much to process it but really we'll cover that in another video but you can see I just need to open this arm leg up here sorry you can just kind of work it down the knife like that open that right up we're almost there that's it so we've got a pretty good bit of hide but once we've actually taken this off especially if it's hot weather you just want to roll the hide up almost on itself into a little parcel and keep the moisture because at this point really what I do with this hide is I find a board or make a frame nail it out or strap it out so it's nice and stretched and then um, get some scraping action on it to get the uh, the membrane layer off and any fat and flesh there won't be too much on a rabbit but there will be a membrane layer it's not necessary to get it off completely at this moment because you can use a pumice stone and work it at a later stage but just to get it at the best it can really be for brain tanning to, to absorb those oils from the brain is um, is really the condition you want it in and really with brain tanning you're not really tanning anything at all you're just putting oil from the brain of the animal um, fatty tissue which is essentially what the brain is back into the hide to make it quite supple and then through stretching it you really kind of rip up those fibers and loosen them and then you end up with quite a supple hide but we'll put our hide to the side and we'll carry on with our rabbit because we obviously haven't finished dressing it yet I prefer to joint rather than just ram my knife through bone so I've just worked away a lot of the, the meat around this actual neck there and I can just take a stone and just hit it and the head will come off and then our brains in our head and there's our tanning package right there we don't need really anything else apart from a bit of uh, force to get the hide in a decent condition some of these broken bones will allow us to joint the animal pretty quickly you can see we've got another little bit there that should be pretty easy to joint if you can't joint things too easily you'll always be able to find stones and things and it'll just allow you to free your limbs up it will smash the bone up you have to be, be aware of that it's not as clean as, as jointing where you find a limb with a joint and you you put it through but uh, for me if a bone's already busted up I'm not too fussed anyway but at the back here we do have some bits to get rid of you can see these back legs are usually really tough I mean it's a serious animal in some respects for its size take a stone again just crack that limb take that off you can use the back of your knife as well you can actually take the spine of your knife and hit it I'm just not doing it because there's a lot of stone hanging around and I'll end up just clacking my knife on stone for no reason when there are other tools I can use just break that get that off as well the crabs can have that when the tide comes in and uh, really what we're left with is something you know pretty usable we just need to make an incision just here watching that we don't puncture the intestine and then what we do I don't know what sort of damage this has got in it but you can see we just slide the knife up there just like so can go past the diaphragm as well and open this right up the ribs are fairly soft that you won't damage a, too many knives on there but obviously if you've got a 
sort of fragile knife you might do and you can see all the guts in there we've got a variety of different things um, you can see that we've got a liver just here and um, that liver doesn't look amazingly healthy I must be honest actually a lot of patching on it and uh, it's good to check the liver and, and the kidneys and various organs of the animal because it because it tells you the health of the animal um, but we can eat that but that's really hard it's actually rock hard and it shouldn't be the liver should be very soft so perhaps this animal was of ill health but I'm gonna get rid of most of this anyway I'll probably just keep the heart in this case and the kidneys because um, it's not looking um, it's not looking massively healthy actually I'm sure it was but all you do really is you can touch them or you don't have to but you just take it all out like that just pull it all out as one big sack just like so and I'm sure the sea life will uh, will benefit greatly from that sometimes if you've got a decent enough knife in a respect you can just split the pelvis like so and that allows you to clean things up really really easily by just getting all this stuff out here just be careful because it can be sharp but it does give you a decent visual of how clear and clean everything can be you just got to watch these bones either side here because you can cut yourself on it so that's um, alright we've got some fat I'll leave that there fat's good fat's more valuable than meat that's for sure in some respects it's a better form of energy and uh, we can go in here we can pull the heart out get the lungs off the heart so we've got a little heart there and uh, get all this out what you can do as well if you don't eat these side wings here they're very very fleshy I normally don't eat them I usually take them off before I stew the rabbit but you can see that the best bit of the rabbit are just these back straps here these back straps are absolutely delicious really tender and you've got good back legs as well and a bit of meat on the front so that's really it that's our package that we've ended up with a hide a brain to tan the hide with and the meat of the rabbit just there so I hope you enjoyed that video guys and I hope you found it useful it's really just a quick video um, I was out here doing a bit of hunting just after some rabbits really it's that time of year in some respects and uh, there was some wood pigeon around as well got something today and thought I'd just share it with you as I'm going to be preparing this hide and I wanted some meat from the rabbit as well to actually make a stew with losing a bit of light now this time of year it never stays particularly light for too long and it kind of limits the filming and what you can do but I thought it'd be nice to share this with you so I hope you found it useful and I'll see you very soon for another video. Thanks again guys, take care.